Hi you guys, welcome back for another writing video. Ooh, I feel like I just saw an orb go right by the camera. Not creepy at all. I'm going to go back to doing the kind of videos where I answer your guys' questions and do little shout outs and um, kind of like what I used to do before writing Month of Fear when like I saw a question in the comments and I give you guys a shout out on here and answer your questions. So I'm going to go ahead and do one of those for this video. And I got this comment back in October and I saved it because I absolutely love this comment and I'm so sorry I don't know your real name and I tried to find it but I can't and I love to know your guys' names because I love, I recognize you guys and I know who you are. But um, of course the air conditioner goes on, I've been waiting for it to go on and I tried to get it to go on before the video. It waited. Um, so this person's name is Me Write Fantasy, and I'm sorry I don't know your real name. And she asks, "Do you have any videos on dealing and writing with PTSD?" I want to write this as well. Um, I saw that question. I was just like, "Oh, girl, yes, 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 yes." Um, I did do a video when I was a little thing when I was a lot younger about writing mental illness but it is on private now because I'm not really comfortable with how my old videos were so I'm gonna be redoing that and starting with just this is gonna be writing PTSD because I know PTSD is a huge issue that comes up for our characters and how do we write that how do we channel it from us to our characters if we haven't dealt with PTSD, if ours was different, if we're not really educated on what it is, which I really wasn't until I got to do some studying and I got to study it a little bit and this video is coming at such a perfect time because my character I'm currently writing for my screenplay in school, Sophia, is the main character I have that has PTSD. Aria has it pretty bad, but Sophia is at the top. Um, you guys don't know her story, I'm sure some of you know, her PTSD is like extremely bad. So I keep saying PTSD and everything, some of you guys might, know what, no, might not know what that is. So PTSD is actually Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, it is a mental disorder, and I'm going to read you guys the definition because I'm really into that. It is a mental health condition that's triggered by a terrifying event, either experiencing it or witnessing it. Symptoms may include flashbacks, nightmares, and severe anxiety, as well as uncontrollable thoughts about the event. And so that's basically what PTSD is. It is very common after the war. It is very common after rapes, after shootings. But it's also um, other things. And maybe not such big catastrophic events. It could also be after a death in the family. It could be after an abuse. It could be after anything, even a suicide attempt. I do know that I have struggled with PTSD. And though obviously I've never been in the war. I've never been abused. But I do struggle with PTSD. Um, based off a trauma that happened when I was very young and with a family member. So I can relate a little bit, but mine is on the very, very, very minuscule side, whereas I know a lot of these characters, like Sophia, is very, like, um, it's very severe. So I can't, I can relate to what it feels like, but not on that level at all. Mine is just some nightmare sometimes. But... We're going to go right into writing PTSD. Um, this is going to sound like I can sum up the video in 30 seconds, 30 more seconds. How to write PTSD? Research. Research, research, research. Um, number one for me, it is kind of different because I do suffer with this a little bit, is read stories. Read stories. Read, read, read. PTSD, just Google PTSD stories. Dealing with PTSD stories. Real stories. Not written by doctors. Real stories real stories. You want to know the reality of not being able to fall asleep, to being in the shower and gripping the walls all of a sudden because you're having a panic attack because you hear footsteps and you think the, the footsteps are someone coming in to beat you. You want to be able to feel that fear and channel it into your characters. You want, um, you want to do that and sometimes that can't come from like a medical journal or like a medical website, it needs to come from reality because it, it comes straight from like real stories. And I know these real stories are out there because I have read them. Um, there are chat rooms for PTSD. There are stories. There are stories on YouTube, my PTSD journey. Um, because when you're, every time, anytime you're dealing with a mental illness, and PTSD is one that's very severe and it affects so many people, my main concern is not offending 
survivors and victims. That's my number one thing is I don't want to offend someone because I know how I would feel if someone was writing something about suicide survivor or depression, someone who struggles with depression and they got the facts wrong and they maybe made us out to be not good people or something. I know how I would feel. And I know how I did feel, for instance, when 13 Reasons Why came out. I know how I felt inside. And I would never want anyone else to feel that. So that's always in my back of my head. That's always my number one. I want to be authentic. And doing that is reading real stories. And also, I guarantee everyone knows at least one person that struggles with PTSD. Even if they got in a car accident and every time they feel a car behind them, they have a little bit of PTSD. I was in a car accident. Three weeks after I got my license when I was 15, I was rear-ended on the highway very badly, broke my ribs, um, hit my head against the steering wheel, my mom got hurt. It was really bad, the person we think was texting. And it, when it happened, there was solar glare. And the next year, I want to say, when I saw solar glare outside, I would freak out and I'd panic and I did not like driving in solar glare. My mom, for example, she was in a horrible car accident when she was 15. She was crushed in the back of a car. Um, and broke her pelvis. She was sitting behind the driver's seat when that happened. And to this day, 60 years, almost 60 years old, she cannot sit behind the driver's seat because of PTSD. It is a very real thing. And if it's something a little like that or something, um, I'm using an example that I know from TV. I don't know if you guys know it. Obviously, you guys know I love Grey's Anatomy. I'm using the example of Owen when he saw the Christina ceiling fan back in season four or five. It was a long, long time ago. He saw the ceiling fan, and it reminded him of propellers, and he started choking her and really hurt her. And he didn't know he was doing it, and it was just a PTSD moment. Um... That was a really good example. Definitely watch stories with it, with PTSD, and just do so much research. Ask around. Um, and this might be, I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out how to word this, because I see this a lot, and it kind of that bothers me. L listen to who you're getting your sources from. If someone has never struggled with it, and they don't know, but they call themselves like an expert on it, and they're like, oh, well, I know about it because I write about it but they've never gone through it, maybe take advice with a grain of salt. You want to know something that is real because I know, I watch videos on here and I know the difference between someone when they're like writing mental illness, someone who has experienced it, and someone who just writes it and they don't know and they're sitting in their room with like this great fluffy life talking about mental illness but they've never experienced it. There is a difference. Just like I could never ever, for Annalise, give advice on dealing with sexual abuse. People have asked, I don't know. That is Annalise's story. It is not mine. I do write it, but everything, and I will talk about how I do write sexual abuse scenes, but that's all based off research. It's not reality, so I'm not one to talk about that. And it's the same with mental illness and PTSD. If you don't, if you haven't experienced it, and you're out there like, oh, you do this, like, like do that, definitely my biggest piece of advice is leave it to people who understand and leave it to the professionals. And that's a huge thing that I like to do. I like to hear the real stories. You can you can tell. I don't know if you guys are going to agree with me on this. You can tell the difference between a story that's like made up from imagination and one that's based on reality. That is just my opinion of it. Um, PTSD is a very is a very big issue and it, it affects so many people worldwide to where there are stores out there there are definitely definitely there are hotlines out there if you want to research don't like call a hotline if you don't need it you don't want to take the resource away from someone else but look around research email look at an online support group just try to my biggest with it's not even PTSD it's all mental illnesses put yourself in the character's shoes and do as much research as you can as if they're a friend and you're trying to help them. As if, pretend, treat it as if you have a friend with horrible PTSD and you're trying to help them cope. What steps would you take and take those steps for your character, if that makes any sense. Another thing is try and put yourself in their shoes and try and, what do they have PTSD from and try and put it in yourself. For mine, um, Sophia has PTSD from Jackson raping and beating her. I try to imagine. I can't. I can't. But I try to imagine. If that were me and I heard a knock outside, how would I react? 
after surviving that. And sometimes, honestly, after, um, sorry, my dad's texting me about my, about their Thanksgiving decorations and he's being funny. Um, what was the thing? Sometimes after I write Sophia and I'm like really in the zone and I go out to work out, I go to the gym, I'll be walking and I see like a tree is in the dark and this tree, I swear to God, it looks like a man. And I'll like jump and I'll be like, get it together, girl. You're not Sophia. Like I will get into that mindset like, oh my God, is that Jackson? Jackson's not real. <laughs> um, you want to be able to get that. So what are they so, what are your characters so afraid of? It, you try and be afraid of it too. I know, and this is actually something my teacher told me the other day. What what is the place you're most scared? Where is your traumatic place? And I know where mine is. I definitely know where mine is, and mine has been the same my whole life. And it says go there, go to that place. Everyone has something they're afraid of. What's yours? And I think channeling into that is very 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 helpful. So yeah, I really hope that answers your question on writing PTSD. If I was, I'm gonna check the question again just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. Suffering from tw love interest is suffering from 31 months of oh, um, Just looking at the question again, I don't want to read the whole question out loud because I don't know but for privacy and everything. Um, my advice when you want to write torture, someone who's surviving that, my take on it, again, I'm not a professional, but physical contact would be a big thing. Um, trust um, all that and definitely look into stories read stories real life stories um if someone's been tortured for a long time like sophia was their whole life is going to be different they're going to look at the world differently they're going to have different outlooks and everything about them is going to be altered and jaded so definitely um look into that and try those aspects if i did not answer your question all the way you feel free to message me again on tumblr and i will i'll answer it again like privately but i just want to make a video because i thought that was a great great topic so anyway thank you guys so much i hope this helped and i will see you guys in my next video, writing video and i will be doing my writing mental illness updated so look out for that all right thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye